Hey guys! So, in this video I'm going to try and explain what a stack trace is to you. So let's get into it. Now I'll try to keep this as beginner friendly as I humanly can. So, what is a stack trace? Well, you may have seen it. You may not know that it's called a stack trace. Maybe you do, I don't know. But usually you see it when you have fucked up. What do I mean by fucking up? Well, I mean that as your program is running and just for some reason, something goes critically wrong, your program crashes. Now, a lot of programming languages will provide you with a log output of something that went wrong. And you may have seen this. There's this nice little output, usually in red, where you have a bunch of names and by and a colon and some number and it's just a big mess of stuff. Now what you are looking at when you're looking at that nice hostile looking output, that is the stack trace my friend. So what is the stack trace? Well the stack trace is this basically your program's attempt to tell you what functions have been called up until the point where your program crashed. Now the intention of this is to help you figure out where something went wrong. Because if you think about it, without that stack trace, if it was just silent, your program is a black box. You have no idea what went wrong, for what reason, and where to look. And that's why the stack trace is hands down one of the most useful things in programming. Because trust me, you will mess up a lot. Errors is just everyday stuff for us programmers. And using the, learning how to effectively use tools such as the stack trace will help you if in a very, like make it much easier for you to understand where to start your search to figure out what went wrong with your program. So at first it might seem to be a little bit intimidating for a beginner that, all right, you have all of this, what, what am I looking at? What am I looking for? Well, what you're looking for is, well, at least what, that's what I try to do because the stack trace, especially if you're using a bunch of libraries and stuff of that nature, you'll see all this output and you'll see different types of functions. Some of them you, you like, all, they, may, they may be named all kinds of weird things, but what you're looking for is a reference to something that you recognize. Ideally, something in your own code. Because I can just tell you from experience that it's usually you, it's not them, it's you. If you're using a third party library or anything like that and there's a stack trace, like something goes wrong in your code, you should just assume that it's something in your code to start off with and start investigating that first before you start pointing fingers and thinking that somebody else messed up. So what you do is you look at the stack trace and you try to find the first reference going from the top to the bottom. I'll explain why. And just figure, see if you can recognize any of the function names in, in the trace. And then you see the colon and the number. The colon and the number is a line number, my friend. Which means that if you find a reference to a function that you wrote yourself, and the colon and the number, now you know where to look. Start looking there and see if you can step back through the execution of the program and figure out what could have gone wrong. That's as, uh, it's as easy as that, my friend. Because the way it works is that the stack trace is, as you may figure out, just a, a log output of the stack. Now the stack is simply how the computer or how your program is allocating memory in order to execute its logic. So if you think about it as just a, basically a, a stack of blocks. So when you first start your program, you allocate a space of memory, a block of memory, if you will. And then when you create another function inside of the, basically the next function is being called, that block is put on, put on the previous block. And so you build, think of it as a, a small 
tower basically of blocks that goes upwards until such a time as something is returned. So the way it works is you allocate a function, you execute logic, you build it up and then some logic returns to the previous function and it goes down and then it goes up and that's basically how it works. And the stack trace as you can imagine is that something goes wrong after you've allocated a bunch of functions or you're calling a bunch of logic and then it breaks and the stack trace is just a top-down representation of all the things that have been allocated or all the memory executions that, the, that your program has done until it reached that error case. So understanding how a stack trace works is critical in order for you to effectively solve your own bugs. So to summarize, the stack trace is just your program or like your programming language trying to help you figure out the steps that happened up until the point where your where your program broke and by simply going back backtracking through the stack with the stack trace and trying to find the first place where you find your own code that's usually the shortest way to figuring out what went wrong have a great day